Right, the year is almost over and I basically started investing in crypto somewhere in December of last year. For years, I've been telling my friends that they were absolutely nuts for investing in some digital currency that you can't see or touch, but needless to say, the fever hit me too, and in this video, I'm going to tell you the 10 things I've learned in crypto. The first lesson I've learned in crypto is to take your profits and your initial. You might have heard of the term hodler, which means hold on to dear life. Well, I've done that with a couple of projects and in fact, I've done it during this entire bear market and that didn't go well, I can tell you. Had I taken profit sooner, then I would have been able to buy back in cheaper. Obviously, you can't time the market, but being greedy is worse. Imagine buying something for $100 and that token is now 200. That's a 100% profit. Now, I don't know much about the regular markets, but I do know that a return on investment of 100% is a lot. Even if I would have just taken out a small portion, at least I'd have some money back. But when we see the price on 200 and read all the bullish news, then that sparks an adrenaline rush thinking it will go higher again. So in the next bull run, I'm going to keep my calm and take profits more. Even though a times five was coming during the last bull run, that doesn't mean it will happen again in the next. Real money is always better than paper profits. The second lesson I've learned in crypto is that day trading will render you more losses than profit. When I first started day trading, I did this with leverage. I even used a robot service that would open and close trades for me. Now due to my own mistake, by using the same account as the robot, I lost 5,000 euros in one week because I manually closed the trade and when the bot wanted to do that a few days later, he opened a new trade to go long. Otherwise, that so-called long trade would have closed the short. And that's when I decided to stop trading with leverage. Now in between, I did have some profits, but in the long run, it wasn't paying off. There were also some spot trades that I did with a couple of coins that were pretty predictable in how they acted and those were profitable and helped me increase my bag. But that didn't weigh up against the leverage trade that had rendered me a loss. Now my own strategy is now either a swing or a long term trade. And lesson number three, ladies and gentlemen, is to stay away from meme coins. There have been a couple of meme coins that I've invested in and the returns could have been amazing. But the truth is 99% of those tokens are either set up for a slow rock or they are a pump and dump scheme. Tokens that have an actual use case tend to do much better in the long term. And when you follow Telegram callout channels to find the next gem, those guys already have a bag when they post it. So when everybody's jumping in, after they call it, they exit their position. Which brings us to lesson number four. But before I tell you what lesson number four is, please know that I'm not a registered financial advisor and that my video should not be taken as financial advice. They are meant to be educational and entertaining only. Always make sure to do your own research before investing into any projects. And now that we've got that out of the way, Let's continue with lesson number four. And lesson number four is about being careful who you listen to. Everybody is a so-called expert. Maybe you've came across those YouTube channels, which are basically the same like people calling the weather. It might go up, it might go down, but if it goes sideways, it will probably do this. And if that's not the case, then I'm sure it'll go the other way around. They don't really add anything to your knowledge. And call out channels on Telegram are the worst because that's a guaranteed setup to lose money unless you're absolutely quick on the button. My non-financial advice would be to find a couple of influencers on Twitter that show a good knowledge of the crypto space and have a good reputation among the community. That gives you solid background information rather than price prediction and that always makes use of sources or show you their research. That way you have the best chance of anticipating what might come next. Lesson number five is about minimizing the risk for you. I made a dedicated video on that phrase, not your keys, not your crypto, and I highly recommend you checking that video out, which I'll link at the end of this one. If you keep your money on exchanges, then you are at the risk of losing everything. Just look at what happened to FTX and BlockFi, for instance. No company, institution, or entity is too big to fail in the crypto space. Same with Luna and Anchor, because nobody expected that to happen. And if it's one thing FTX has taught us, it's that the damage can work like a ripple effect. Just look at Alameda and all the projects they have been active on. When there were rumors about FTX going bankrupt, I immediately withdrew all my funds from BlockFi. Because a few weeks prior to that, they were bailed out for 400 million by Sam Bankman frieds FTX. Look at what happened to Solana, the price dropped tremendously because Alameda Research, who went bust as well, had a big bag of it. 
Try to link everything together so you can act accordingly and prevent yourself from losing a lot of money. And speaking of money, lesson number seven, it is always good to have some fiat or stable coins around for the next opportunity. That way, you're not fully invested when the market crashes and you can use that money to either dollar cost average down or to scoop up a project of which you were waiting for an entry. Lesson number eight, don't chase after the highest APIs. Take VVS for instance, a token on the Kronos chain. There was a time I received 1 million percentage of API. Unfortunately, I don't have the screenshot anymore, but that was absolutely nuts. However, even though that seems much, the day after it was 500K and the day after that it was 250K and so on. So the more money that flows into such tokens, the lower that API will become. Same with Cake. There have been times where the API was 170%, but right now it's around 3% if you don't feel like locking your tokens. Those high APIs usually don't last very long, which means that you won't get as much in interest as you first expect. Sure, it's nice to grab this if you can, but in my own experience, I saw the price of a token become worth less than the yield that you received from it. And lesson number nine is about doing your due diligence and not being afraid to be critical of a project. Like Apple and Android fanboys, the crypto space has many of them. There will always be people that are super enthusiastic, but also people that are more reserved. Try to look for transparency in a platform or token and try to understand their tokenomics. Make sure you fully understand what's going on and always ask yourself, what does this project add to the crypto space? If you just follow the masses, then you're set up to lose a lot of money. And the final lesson, lesson number 10, is to not invest money you cannot afford to miss and to spread your risk. Look at Luna, Anchor, 3AC, Voyager and now FTX and BlockFi. People lost a lot of money on those platforms and some allegedly even committed suicide. I'm sure you'll think that you will never do this, but imagine losing your life savings within days, making you broke and not able to support your family. Things like that can break mentally healthy people in an instant. Make sure to spread your risk as well by using different platforms rather than storing everything on one. As said before, also don't forget that if you don't own your keys, you don't own your crypto. And that's it. Stay safe, everybody. If you want to learn more about crypto, please click that playlist right there. For now, my name is Ruka Richen. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Doei!